Hi guys. Well, this is a fun little exercise for adults or children alike. Keep your children happy for hours with this one. And it's using the Windows PC, an Affinity Designer. Now you might think Designer is really difficult to use, but it couldn't be easier. And this is how to paint a mountain sunset on the Windows PC. And you can see even on that image there that there's quite obvious brush strokes. And it's so easy. So let's get into it. So please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget that one. That's very mm. early on. Um, a lot of people forget to subscribe. Don't be one of the forgetful, forgetful ones. It really helps me if you do subscribe. So have a look at that. The subscribe button's just below the video in the description area. So starting with one simple painting, you can go on easily to ever more complex shapes as you learn the fundamentals. So, in the beginning, you have a basic image. Now, how do we get there? We'll start with opening a suitable canvas. Start with a new document in the presets. Create a new document based on an A3 size in print. Well, in fact, you can use any size you like. I just happen to have selected A3. It gives you plenty of working space. I like to set it in inches, but of course the choice is yours. And for this exercise, it doesn't really matter. If you produce it on A4 or, or a US letter size, you can print it directly to your printer. The background doesn't need to be transparent, but it's a good idea to make it an artboard and in landscape mode. Now you can see over there I've got artboard ticked and it's in landscape mode. Too easy. Press OK to create the new document. Now the resulting canvas. You can see the document clearly now, and the default name is, as usual, Artboard 1. So let's rename that to something inter inter interesting. Oh, tongue-tied this morning. Uh, mountain Sunset sounds good. So we'll take that Artboard, just click in the blue layer panel there, and change its name to Mountain Sunset, the new name of the canvas. No mistaking what you've got then. Now... Let's begin with the background. Put a simple plain white rectangle on the artboard. Easy as, and you can see there in the layers panel, you've got the first layer on your artboard. And it's just a plain white background. Add an horizon guide. Now, you may think that's odd, but generally speaking, landscapes have some sort of horizon line in there. So drag down a horizontal guide about a third of the way up from the bottom. This is your horizon line. It doesn't have to be exact, really, it's just a guide. If you're looking into the far distance, that's about where your horizon will be. Now, the yellow base. We're going to start with the, a yellow base. This is our sun. Select the vector brush tool and the fill colour of yellow. You can see the vector brush tool there is just under the crossing arrows I've got, which is not helpful, but there you go. And you can see the word vector brush tool is highlighted there. Set the brush width to 600 pixels, which is about 2 inches. So if you're dealing in inches, it's 2 inches. But at about 600 pixels is good. And it's a nice broad brush. <coughs> the opacity at the moment is 100%. We're going to change that later on. And there's a number of ways you can deal with the opacity of your painting. Now the brush. We go and select the diluted acrylic stroke number two brush. Now, very unhelpfully, they've got the numbers 128, 128, 128 beside the brushes. But if you hover over the lowermost brushes, you'll see diluted acrylic stroke number two comes up. That's the very bottom uh, brush in that list. Reset it to two inches or 200, uh, 600 pixels. It's defaulted to 128 pixels. So we want that uh, much bigger. You'll be there all day if you're just painting with really small brush strokes. Now, brush and paint. Set the layer opacity to about 55% and the fill opacity to the same. Now you can see I've got on the layer there, the opacity is 55%, and the fill opacity 
is 55%. That really affects the layers and the opacity of the effects that are going on here. If you wanted to, you could go right to the top toolbar there where you've got color, width and opacity and set the opacity just there to 55% and just leave that. Don't worry about the other ones. I've done this for a reason because I want that first layer of the sunset to actually be an almost transparent layer. Well, 55% transparent. So let's see where that takes us. Working from left to right, put down enough brush strokes to build the first layer. A good solid layer, but not too thick that you lose the brush strokes and the texture. So select all your new layers because each stroke creates a new layer and adjust your opacity again to a suitable level. As I said, I'm using 55 and now 65 in the effects panel. The opacity in the top toolbar is still 100%, and I could have saved all of this messing around by just doing 55% in the top bar. It's up to you. If your children are doing this painting, just tell them to set the opacity in the top bar to 50%. That's fine. Add an orange colour. The yellow colour is, guess what, the sun, which gets a bit more orange as it gets further into the sky. Add your orange above the yellow in the same way you did before, in side-to-side -side strokes. This time you'll be blending your orange into the yellow area. Be sure to leave at least an inch of pure yellow at the very bottom for our sun. This is our sunset. Again, feel free to add more coats of paint as needed. You can quite clearly see the brush strokes there. It's a very good brush, that one. Do the same with pink. Add as many coats as you need to cover the canvas and blend down into the orange area. As long as it doesn't touch the yellow too much, it will look fine. When blending up, however, be sure to leave at least one inch of white space at the top of your canvas. This will be our night sky edge where we'll start in the next step. Yeah. You may think these are odd colours for a sunset, but They'll all blend together and you'll see how it looks. Now we're going to add purple. Because purple is darker than the other colours, we will be utilising it a bit differently. Start painting with purple at the top of your canvas and blend down into your pink area. Be careful not to take it too far into the orange or you'll end up with a gross muddy colour. In fact, I have hardly covered any of the pink there. Your first coat of purple will probably look patchy and ugly. Now this is good because it means you're painting in thin layers and your end result will be smooth. Simply be patient and add more layers until it's thick enough. It's just like painting with real paint and a real brush. Now the last chance to blend. If the colours in your horizon are still looking blocky, this is your last chance to blend them to your satisfaction. Much easier. Remember to use very thin layers. It can be tempting to try globbing on some thick paint for a quick fix, but the end result will not be nice. And you can see there I haven't been really careful about smooth thin layers um, all joining nicely on, on their margins and borders. It's paint. You dob it on, but not too thick. Remember the horizon line we drew at the very beginning? We're coming back to that now. The lowest point of your mountains will be at your horizon line. Sounds natural. With that in mind, take your pencil and outline where you would like to place them. Don't be afraid to get creative here. There are many different kinds of mountains. Tall, sharp, craggy, low and sloping, rounded and thin. Even some gently rolling hills would be fine. This is also a good place to cover up some of your painting's problem areas, if you have any. For example, the left, side, the left side of my picture has an issue towards the top, so I made that mountain higher to cover it up. Be sure to leave some yellow peeking through at the base. You can't have a sunset without a sun. Create a mixture of black and purple paint. This will be the colour for our background mountains. Experiment with this using the HSL palette. You'll get some really nice colours on that. 
And there we are, the HSL sliders. Setting the brush and colours for the mountains. Use about 150 pixels width. Set the opacity to 72%. And the colour is, a, is quite a blackish purple. You can see the numbers there, 2, 4, 3, 50 and 1. It's not terribly dark, but it's certainly darker than anything you've got on the thing at the moment. And there it is. You can see the opacity is still letting some of the um, underneath paint show through. With your medium brush, begin painting the outline of your mountains. Create a silhouette that you like either by precisely following your outline or simply using it as a guide. Don't be afraid of the dark paint. And again, don't try and be exact. Everything doesn't sit neatly above the horizon line. If you look out at the horizon, you'll notice horizons aren't smooth and level, unless perhaps you're on the far western plains somewhere of Australia or Wyoming or the fields in Africa, who knows. Now, paint your mountains. Once your paint outline is complete, it's time to take up your large flat brush again. This time, when you fill in the silhouette, your stroke should be in a more up and down motion following the shape of the mountains, rather than side to side like for your horizon. The first coat will look terrible. Dark colours take more coats to finish. So if it still isn't looking good, be patient and persistent. It will get there. I've set the opacity to 40% and the brush width to 0.5 of an inch, which is about 150 pixels. The brush type is still the diluted acrylic number 2. Very good brush, that one. Looks very lifelike. Now, paint foreground mountains. Take your brush again and outline some foreground mountains. These mountains can be lower or higher than your background mountains. This gives your image a little bit of depth. Again, find a design that you like and run with it. On your palette, use some pure black paint, no mixing, and fill in these mountains. Depending on how much purple you put in your other black paint, your darker mountains may contrast a little, like mine, or a lot. Now we'll add some stars. The final step is to add some stars, as well as any other details you'd like to add. Foreground details and so on we'll begin adding now. Now the pattern of stars I've used there, that's simply in the star tool on the left hand side and you put them in and repeat them across the sky. And that's a bit of a sprinkle trail I've got across there, like Santa's been heading north maybe. Add some foreground and you can see the brush strokes clearly there, just like real paint. And as it's a sunset, the foreground will naturally be dark and indistinct. So brush in abstract shapes, perhaps in a dark green. There's patches of forest there, perhaps. as patches of green grass. Still using the same brush, mind you. And you can see up there I've set the width to 300 pixels, the opacity 51%. And I've got various colours in there, and the current colour I'm using is a pale yellow. Notice that I keep each section in its own group in the layer panel. As each stroke is a curve, this helps to keep the layer list easy to read. And you can name them if you like and their locations, but it saves you having thousands of layers because each brush stroke creates a layer and you can put them all in nice, neat groups. Keeps them easy to read and you don't get lost in them. The finished painting, as simple or as complex as you like. Now, as this image is purely in designer, there are no pixel layers so you can scale it to any size you like with no loss of image quality. Although be aware, it's got a white background layer in there, the very first layer. You'll need to convert that to curves if you want to export it as a pure SVG file that you can use in your cutters um, or other craft ideas. If you really need pure SVG for something like um, design space for cricket, you have to have all curves, and that first rectangle is definitely not a curve. You have to convert it to a curve. If you put text in there, convert them to curves. Everything needs to be a curve, 
or design space won't like it. And of course, you can make a much, much nicer picture than I've made there. Hmm, let me think. Did, can I say that one of my children did this? No, they're all grown up. <laughs> I've done that exactly like that to emphasise how easy it is and how simple it can be to make a reasonably nice painting and the kids will love it. So, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me keep going and I very much appreciate it.